We've turned a corner on that, I fervently hope. We have a new president whose own life, starting with his days as a community organizer in New York and Chicago, is testimony to unlocking the power of ordinary people, and whose campaign was an unprecedented ex example of citizenship in action. Many of us who have in recent years lamented the state of our democracy, who feared it was almost beyond repair, are now faced with a different challenge. How to maintain the huge and passionate civic engagement of the past year and keep it going as a force for progressive change at this historic moment. At a moment our new president seems to recognize of Rooseveltian dimensions, where the greatest crisis in decades is also the greatest opportunity we have to bend the arc. From every sign we get, President-elect Obama will call on Americans of all ages to engage more deeply in our communities, with our neighbors, to address the urgent challenges reflected in the work that each of you is doing, to provide health care for the underserved, to protect our planet, welcome immigrants into our communities and former prisoners back into them, mentor hard-to-reach kids and open the doors to college. The list goes on and on. So my first call to action is for those of us here, both those with the money and the platform, like Atlantic and our foundation colleagues, and everyone else with energy, passion, and voice, to make the most of this moment. Respond to the call of a new president when he asks what we can do for our country, a country in which many of us are happily to find, uh, surprised to find we take a newfound pride. Help to pass the Kennedy Hatch Bill and other measures to build institutions, the new and improved and inclusive versions of the Peace Corps and AmeriCorps, building on the success of Experience Corps that give structure and funding to this movement that create the institutions that Sarah was talking about last night. To push for a third age bill that could help millions of Americans launch encore careers through tuition assistance and retraining programs. Don't let this moment pass. If you work to seize it, expand it, fly with it, you'll find that Atlantic Philanthropies is by your side. Now finally I want to talk about troublemaking, which seems to be the surprise theme of this summit. <laughs> Each of us makes trouble in our, in our own way, but let's make some more. Because what we need to do in the days ahead is to bring together two powerful things that have too often been disconnected. We need to join the desire to serve, to teach newcomers English, to train inmates in job skills, to give scholarships to poor kids, with social action that is aimed at the policies and the systems that often give rise to the need for service in the first place. Service is not servility. Service is a companion to and a predicate for action. So we need to stop immigration raids on factories and homes that detain and deport the future Catalinos and build a path to citizenship for 12 million fellow human beings. We need to build schools, not prisons, and revisit the draconian drug and sentencing laws that have put more young men of color behind bars than behind desks in college classrooms. We need policies that make public schools work for all kids and college affordable when they graduate. We need as much attention to the destruction of young promise as to weapons of mass destruction in a fierce urgency of now that treats their promise and potential of every, the promise and potential of every child every bit as seriously as the failures of Wall Street titans and Detroit automakers. We need to marry service with advocacy to change policy, law, and the flow of money, because otherwise we cannot get the job done, and we will continue to feel, as we too often do, that we are emptying the ocean with a teacup. You and millions like you are uniquely poised to step up even more boldly to this challenge, because you and the people you serve have the authenticity to be listened to. When you put in the hours, as Mark Goldsmith uh, has done, to help young men who've paid their debt to society for making a personal mistake, you have the credibility to tell the New York State Senate that the Rockefeller drug laws are a societal mistake. We can't continue to have two tracks of engagement in this country, one that is aimed at winning elections and passing laws, and the other at helping our neighbors. The two must come together, and when they do, they'll be multiplied a thousandfold. 
I believe that we are in the cusp of that exciting moment. And if those of us who have been in the vanguard of the movement to tap the potential of older adults, to harness purpose, can do that together, in the words of New York Times columnist Nicholas Kristof, we boomers may be remembered more for what we did in our 60s than what we did in the 60s. But to do that, we need to recapture some of the spirit of the 1960s, of the children of the greatest generation who held this nation to its founding promises and saved it with their marches and their courageous journeys south, just as surely as those who fought on the fields of Europe. They stopped a war and built a civil rights movement that today enables Barack Obama to take the same oath of office as George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, men who owned human beings of Obama's color and ancestry. Another of those predecessors, Woodrow Wilson, though an ardent segregationist, has a quote I very much like, and I want to close with this. Only a million, one in a million people, I do this as a party game, would associate this with him, and it is this. Woodrow Wilson said, I believe that the weakness of the American character is that there are so few growlers and kickers amongst us. Now, we had a wonderful example of growling and kicking the month before last in Ireland, one of the other countries in which Atlantic Philanthropies works. In trying to get the, cut the national budget, the Irish government abolished the entitlement to a medical card which guarantees free access to health care and medicines for all people over 70. Fresh from their recent involvement in the Atlantic-funded Older and Bolder campaign, thousands of Irish citizens led by Age Action Ireland literally took to the streets and forced the government to back down. So let us resolve to prove on this side of the Atlantic, that is the ocean, not the foundation, uh, that Woodrow Wilson was wrong. Let us serve, yes, but let's step up the growling and the kicking, too. Thank you very much.